In this video, we're going to talk about integration by parts. So this is reversing the product rule that you would have with derivatives. So what I want to do to start is actually take a derivative, so that way we can see how the product rule unfolds, and then we can reverse it by integrating it. So as a first exercise, let's find the derivative of f of x is equal to e to the x sine x. And if you remember, if you have two functions f and g, and you take the derivative of them, what you do is you take the derivative of f, multiply it by g, and then you take f and multiply it by the derivative of g. So if we look at e to the x sine x, and we say, okay, e to the x is going to be our function f, and sine of x is going to be our function g, then to take the derivative, we're going to have f of x is equal to but well, we want the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x times g, that's times sine x. Then we're going to add uh, e to the x, which is our f, and multiply it by the derivative of g. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So our solution here would be e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. If we want, we can make it look pretty by extracting out the e to the x. So we get e to the x multiplied all by sine x plus cosine x. Okay, so now let's take a look at our product rule in reverse. So here is our product rule, except here I've written out all the functions. So the derivative with respect to x of f of x gx is f prime x gx plus f x g prime x. So in order to do integration by parts, we're going to take this derivative and we're going to reverse it by integrating it. So let's do that. Let's take the integral of each of these things here. So when we evaluate this, what we're going to get with the first integral is just f of x times g of x. Since we know that the integral of the derivative is the same thing, it just cancels out. Uh, but these two integrals, the integral of f prime x gx and f x g prime x, we don't quite know how to solve. So we're just going to leave these as they are. So this will be f prime x gx dx plus the integral of fx g prime x dx. Okay, so now what we'll do is we have two integrals here. So why don't we solve for one of these? In fact, typically what we do is we would solve for this one on the right, fx g prime x. So let's do that. Let's move this around. So we're going to essentially take this integral here, do it to the other side, and we're going to get uh, the integral of f of x g prime of x dx is equal to f of x times g of x minus the integral of f prime x gx dx. Now this is a mouthful, but typically what we do is we make some substitutions. So what we say is that f of x is equal to u, and g of x is equal to v, and then subsequently we get that f prime of x is equal to du, and g prime of x is equal to dv. So now we can do some substitutions here just to make it a little bit nicer to work with. So this is the same thing as saying that the integral of u times dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, why is this important? Well, first of all, this is just the reversal of the product rule, and we've shown that. We've shown how we get this formula. But also, the benefit here is that if we can take a function u dv, and we can turn it into an easier integral to solve, like v du, then we'll be able to solve our problems, since uv doesn't need to be integrated. It's just a function on its own. So we're going to see how this works and where this works. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to find the integral of x e to the x dx. And I want to rewrite the integration by parts rule over on the right here. So this is the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So what we want to do in these problems when we integrate by parts is we want to do two substitutions. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to substitute in a function for u in order to get the left side here, and then we want to make a substitution for dv. So that's the right side there. Okay, 
So typically we want to pick a u where we can take the derivative easily and we want to pick a dv where we can take the antiderivative easy. So in this question, I'm going to propose that we take uh, x as u and we take e to the x dx as dv here because we know that the integral or the antiderivative of e to the x is just going to be e to the x. So let's write that out. u is equal to x, dv is equal to e to the x dx. Okay, so now we need du and we need v. So if u is equal to x, then the derivative of u is just going to be 1 times dx. So I'm going to leave out the 1 there. And when we take dv is equal to e to the x dx and we want v, we need to take the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of this will just be e to the x. And we don't have to worry about our plus c's or anything. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to rewrite the integral of x e to the x dx in terms of our uh, formula for integration by parts. So we have our u, which is x. We have our dv, which is e to the x dx. So this is equal to u times v. So that's x times e to the x minus the integral of v times du. So v is e to the x and du is just dx. Okay, well this is much nicer, right? Because when we solve this, well, x e to the x, we don't need to do anything with this. But the integral of e to the x dx is just e to the x plus some constant c. So that was much easier to do. And now we have a full solution. In fact, we can, again, pull out the e to the x to make this look nicer. We can say this is e to the x times x minus 1 plus c. And this is the solution to our integral here of the integral of x e to the x dx. So what's important and what is a common mistake is when you're picking your parts, you have to pick a u and you pick a dv. So a lot of people will make mistakes by picking a u and a v and then uh, differentiating both sides and then things just don't work out nicely sometimes. So remember, pick a u, something easy to differentiate, and a dv, something easy to take the antiderivative of. Okay, so this is a case where we have an x times e to the x. There's two functions, that's very clear. But what happens when we go to say ln x? I say I want to use integration by parts here, but you're saying, look, there's only one function. There's only ln x dx. And again, let's just remind ourselves what this formula is so you can follow along. Okay, so this is sort of tricky, and what we have to remember is that we can treat 1 times dx as a function, because it is. So really, we actually have two functions here. We have ln x, and we have 1 times dx. But that's how we're going to make our choice. We're going to pick u equal to ln x, and the reason for that is because when we differentiate this, we're going to get... 1 over x, sorry, 1 over x times dx. Okay, so this is easier to work with than, say, taking the integral of ln x. If we pick dv as ln x, we don't know how to do it because that's just the same problem, right? So now for our dv, we're going to pick uh, dx since that's all that's left here. And when we take the antiderivative of that, of course, we're just going to get x because the antiderivative of 1 is x. Okay, so now we can rewrite our integral here. So now the integral of ln x dx, we want it to be u times v, so that's x times ln x. Again, it looks a little bit nastier, but again, we don't have to take any antiderivative or derivative of this, so x ln x is fine as it is. And then we're going to Subtract the integral of v times du. So that's going to be x times, and du is 1 over x dx. Well, this is nice, because the x and 1 over x are going to cancel. So really, this is just the same thing as taking the integral of 1 dx. Okay, and this is much easier. So now we know this is x ln x minus, well, again, the antiderivative of 1 is just going to be x and then plus c. Again, we can pull something out. We can pull out the x. This will be x times ln x minus 1 plus c. 
And again, if you want to verify this, it's really easy because you can just do the product rule and you can show that you get ln x in the end. Okay, so these two questions are pretty standard questions that you get in your intro lecture. Let's do something a little bit more challenging. And it only looks more challenging because when you're doing integration by parts, you tend to forget all of the other stuff you've learned. You don't want to use more than one method per problem because you're learning it. And when you use all these methods, your brain just gets ugh. But this is a case where we need to use substitution before we do integration by parts. So what, what tells me that? Well, I look up here, I see cosine of x, and I see cosine of x down here, and then I see the derivative of cosine x. Well, it's negative derivative here, so it should be negative sine x, and then I get the dx. So if I pick something like, say, t is equal to cosine x, I'm going to be able to do some pretty easy substitutions here. And again, it takes some practice to get used to this. So now, when we take the derivative of t for a substitution, we're going to find this is going to be negative sine x dx. Okay, so let's do our substitutions here. So e to the cosine x times sine x times cos x dx is now going to be the integral of e to the t, we're replacing cosine x with t, times, well, sine x dx is going to be negative dt. So I'm just going to put that in there just in the same position of sine x, and then we have cosine x, which will also be substituted in by t. If you don't want to put negative dt in there, uh, of course, you could always do the substitution here first, where you say, okay, negative dt is equal to sine x times dx. And maybe this is a little bit more clear as to why uh, we can do this substitution. Okay, and then we can just reorder this. So this is now going to be the same thing as the integral of t times e to the t dt, and we have this negative sign that we're going to put out front. Okay, well this is actually really nice because we already did this problem. It's the same as the first practice problem we did. So uh, this is the integral of x e to the x dx, and we ended up with e to the x times x minus 1 plus c. So now, in our problem, we're dealing with e to the t times t dt, and it's negative. But in the end, this is going to work out the same, right? So this is going to be uh, the negative version of our previous integral, so we don't need to solve this again. We've already solved it once. So this will be e to the t times e minus 1 plus c. Okay. So remember, we're not done because we have to put our substitutions back in. We did a substitution, so we need to reverse our substitution too. So doing all that, we get negative times, well, what do we put in? So t was cosine x. So this will be e to the cosine of x multiplied by t minus 1 is going to become cosine x minus 1. And this is all then plus a constant c. Okay. So, of course, we can distribute the negative however we want. I just like to leave it out front because it's just easier to deal with. I don't make any mistakes if I do this. So, uh, that's it for three practice problems. There's going to be a follow-up video with two more problems that are a little bit more complicated. So, integrals that send you into loops. Um, and then another substitution problem. So, we'll do that in the next video. But as always, if there's any questions, leave them down below. If this video helped, feel free to drop $2 a month on the channel to become a member and support the channel, free education, uh, every cent helps, and I appreciate all of the members so far. So, I'll uh, see you in the next video.